question I would ask you is in this larger conversation about where the U.S. stands in digital cryptocurrencies, it feels like there's uh, different forces that are fighting each other. You, you want this, you want the country to be at the top of the game, and yet I will tell you, I think that uh, some of the other folks uh, in government right now, and I'm thinking even of uh, uh, Secretary Steven Mnuchin and others, and even the president, have some real reservations about cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin and Libra. Thank you so much for having me, Andrew. No, I, I want the United States to lead, particularly in the blockchain technology that underlies digital assets. But many of the concerns that Secretary Mnuchin has, and I, I, I have as well, uh, in terms of, of, of anti-money laundering, right. making sure that these markets continue to have integrity. So I, I don't think there's actually any space between us. It's just that for those that are commodities regulated by us, we want to make sure we create an environment where these markets have integrity and we're able to regulate them and they're able to innovate. Okay, so explain this one to me because I have yet to understand it. Uh, Facebook announces Libra and Washington uh, goes out of its brain, out of their minds. They, they can't even fathom that this is happening. Yet Bitcoin, which has been around now for over a decade and has nobody that you can call, there is nobody you can pick up the phone and say, hey, excuse me, there's a problem here, I need your help, I want to regulate you. Um, nobody seems to be uh, having at least meaningful problems to the same level that they have with Libra. Why is that? Well, they're fundamentally different products, Andrew. And, and I think we also know how Bitcoin works. As you say, it's been around for 10 years. So we have a very good idea of how it works. And we're able to classify that not as a security, but as a commodity. Uh, whereas Libra is developing. And right. there are a bunch of unanswered questions. And, and also the way that it's structured, uh, linking it directly to a set of, of national currencies, a very different product. But uh, I guess the, the larger question is, if any of these were to reach escape velocity, and I don't know what escape velocity even means, but if, if Bitcoin really were, were being used in a meaningful way, it would upend the idea of a monopoly currency that the U.S. has or any government has on, on any of these currencies. And by the way, similarly, if Libra were to truly take off, you'd have billions of people operating with it virtually overnight. How much do you think that weighs on regulators? No, I definitely think that's something that people uh, are, are thinking about. Uh, I never use the term cryptocurrency. I've always used the term digital assets because in my view, uh, consistent with what a number of others have said, these are not yet legal tender. They're not money. They're not currency like traditional currencies. So something like Bitcoin is very important. But again, we classify it as a commodity. It has the volatility of a commodity. And we have futures markets trading it alongside other commodities. Okay, so what has to happen, though, for these things to reach escape velocity? Meaning, from a regulatory perspective, what, what steps, you know, if you look out over the next year or two or three or longer, you think the things that are going to happen to get there, if you think that we do get there? Well, I think it's entirely possible that I get there. And my emphasis has not been on any single digital asset type, but really on the blockchain technology underlying it. Right. And blockchain technology is being used first and foremost for these digital assets. But ultimately, I could see it overtaking the Internet or being effectively parallel to the Internet in using a variety of different kinds of transactions, not just the financial system, but in other types of transactions as well. In terms of the velocity and getting it to the point, I think really a key uh, development, which we haven't seen yet, but we're starting to see in other countries, is if countries start accepting uh, these digital assets alongside other currencies. So, for example, they say that you can use them to pay your taxes. So right. that's a very different... I think we're far from that at this stage. Um, at this point, we're trying to get our arms around it. We're trying to understand the technology. We're trying to understand the financial stability concerns. We're also trying to understand how they can address uh, anti-money right. laundering and counter-terrorist financing. If you were to rank order where the United States plays or ranks in this game, to the extent it's a game, where's the United States right now relative to China, it's hard. South Korea? You name the other countries that are involved in this. Well, I can tell you this. I don't think we're at the top of the list. We may not be at the bottom. I think the Libra Association is a good example of this. Uh, they could have chosen any place in the world to set up. They chose Switzerland. My understanding is a second choice was Singapore. I don't know where the United States was, but it clearly wasn't first on the list. I think. Whoever ends up leading in this technology will end up writing the rules of the road for the rest of the world. And my emphasis is on making sure that the United States is a leader. Chairman, uh, we got to run. 
thank you for that. By the way, I'll give you one just little, a little, little piece of information. The reason why Facebook wanted to do it in Switzerland originally was because they were so nervous, not about regulators in the United States. They were actually trying to uh, solve for what they thought was going to be pushed back in Europe, if you can believe.